Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is Dave here with Gold Gamers, and today we're going to be looking at this PlayStation 4 Pro that's having no video, no signal issues at all. So let's go over to the upper cam and see what we got going on. All right, as you guys can see, we have a PS4 Pro. Um, <clears throat> this was actually shipped in by a person who saw some of our YouTube videos and decided to ship in their game console. She claims that she shipped it into another um, repair shop. They said they couldn't get it repaired, so she decided to give us a chance and to figure out what's going on with this one. So let's look at what we have back here. As you can tell, the HDMI port looks botched. I mean, it looks it looks pretty bad. Um, so, I mean, that should be pretty simple. Um, I, I'm not sure how the repair shop wasn't able to notice the HDMI port being messed up. So, looks like this one is more likely going to be a HDMI port issue. So, let's go ahead and get this PlayStation 4, take it down to the motherboard to see what's going on with it. If you guys don't know how to disassemble a PS4 Pro, you can watch one of my disassembly videos or just type in PS4 Pro disassembly, come back to this video, and then um, we can be able to go from there and see what's going on with this HDMI port on this game console. All right, so we have it down to the motherboard right here. Um, <clears throat> there was a couple things that I noticed with this last repair shop. You can see they replaced one of the thermal pads, but they failed to replace these other two thermal pads on the RAM chips. Now, a lot of people might not think that's important, but um, it does help keep the, the RAM chips cool. I mean, they, they did it right here, but they failed to do it for the other two, <clears throat> which is weird, you know? It's just like, um, I don't know why they would do it for one, but not the other. Um, I can see right here um, on the HDMI header that it just looks bad. Okay, so uh, it looks like they may have replaced the HDMI IC. Did a terrible job at that. Um, the, the These EMI filters kind of look questionable. Uh, really just this one right here as you can see one of the pads is actually totally missing um, and this one as well the pad is totally missing um, you can kind of just tell they was kind of they was just this HMI seat was just put on very wrong and I'm hoping and praying that they didn't lift any of these pads when he was in here working because that will be a process with it itself you can see right here um, when they was obviously applying new solder onto the HDMI IC, they was just slapping it on these components around here. They slapped it all, all around here. I mean, they must have just had a, a a big solder iron. Let's look at this HDMI port to see what we can see as well. Um, because the HDMI port, I mean, obviously they replaced it, but it was just put on way wrong. And let's see what we got here. Um, it's kind of hard to see, so I'm just going to get a little bit more light over here. They definitely use some rough flux. And um, I mean, at least they did a good job at making sure every single solder pin is soldered down. I still don't trust this HMI port because, first off, if you, I don't know if you can barely see it, it's wiggling like crazy. Um, let's check the pads underneath. Um, that just that just makes me scared. I mean, they they did do a good job at replacing the solder on the four legs, but I'm still gonna replace that because, as you can tell, the port doesn't even sit right. Um, they didn't even put it on there right. So here's what we're gonna do. Um, what I'm gonna wanna do with this board is I'm going to obviously replace the HDMI port, and then I'm gonna replace the HDMI IC. Right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just this regular standard cheap multimeter. I'm going to put this thing into continuity mode and then test out the EMI filters to see if I'm getting continuity between the EMI filters to make sure that those traces underneath those EMI filters still work. 
and they're not torn when he was in there well wh whoever was in there working on this ps4 pro um also i'm going to make sure there's no um cross links between it because sometimes the coils inside of it can break if someone moves it around or heats it up too much the coils will break it and it will bridge over so let's see um under the under cam what a microscope is see what we could get on these emi filters so i got my multimeter got it in continuity mode see what we could get on this first emi filter Okay, we have continuity. We have continuity. There's no bridge um, because there's no continuity when I when I bridge it over. We have continuity there. Let's see the bridge. No bridge, which is good. Continuity. So far, so good. Both of those tests out just perfectly fine. Okay, that works. This was the one I was actually scared about. Let's test the bridge. No bridge. Now let's test the pathway over here. Okay. Um, no cross um, works just fine. Continuity there. No bridge. Continuity there. No bridge on either side. So um, EMI filters work 100% fine. So main things that we're going to focus on is pulling off this HDMI port. We're going to focus on the HDMI port because that's going to be the easiest and then what we're going to do is we're going to replace the HDMI IC, um, which will require me to be able to take that off of a donor motherboard and then pop that on here. So let's get started on the HDMI port. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move this stuff out the way. We're going to take our Kapton tape like so, and I'm just going to put it around the HDMI port itself just to make sure I protect the components around it. Okay, so we got cat time tape underneath, which is the most important. I will usually put cat time tape up top, but since I'm going to be doing work up here right after the HDMI port, um, it's just best just to leave this free and open as it is right now. So I'm going to take my clamps like so. You can get these clamps from um, Home Depot. Um, a lot of hardware stores sell these clamps. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clamp it to the desk like so. Let me actually try to get a good spot on this one see where I could be able to get this side clamped I want to make sure I'm not clamping a side where I'm going to break a component or something on the motherboard so as you can see that looks pretty good and now we're going to move our microscope into place turn on our light and here we are all right so as you can see we have the HDMI port right under it and here is what we're going to use right here. Also, if you guys want to know a lot of the tools that I use, the majority of the tools that I use for these videos are in the description below. We're going to use just some regular little tweezers. We're going to pull a heat gun, which is just right here. We're going to turn it up to the highest um, blow on here. I guess that's what you would call it, like the air thrust. And we will turn it up to the second highest temperature on the uh, board. We're just, you know, and your heat gun might be different, so you might need to turn it up a little bit higher just to make sure you can be able to lift it. What we're going to do is we're going to put this right under the HDMI port like so. Um, if you guys can be able to see my camera, the HDMI port is literally right there. It's right under the HDMI port. So here it is. I got my tweezers inside of the port just waiting for the solder to melt. And as soon as it's melted good enough, I'm going to lift this thing. All right, so there it is. We have that lifted. And now what I'm going to do now is put my gloves on and turn on my fume extractor. All right, gloves are on, fume extractor is on. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our um, 8341 no-clean flux. We're just going to put this on here. This flux obviously helps flow the solder to make sure we can be able to get it on there. We're going to take our solder wire and we're going to take our Hackle solder iron and we're just going to go ahead and just start soldering. So um, as you can see, we're just going just completely uh, just across the header and just uh, getting new solder on all the pads. 
Yes. And uh, let me hit that up a little bit more. Let me get that just a tiny bit better. Add a little bit more solder onto here. All right, so that looks good. Now what we're going to do is um, take our new HDMI port and put it on the header. All right, so as you guys can see, we have our HDMI port in our tweezers. This is our brand new one. We have our heat gun set to the same setting. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put our heat gun underneath the motherboard and allow that new solder to heat up and to melt. Then we're going to go ahead and place the new HDMI port on the header. All right, so we have the brand new HDMI port on the header. And as you can see, this there's no wiggle. Um, obviously, it's wiggling just because of the board is moving. But as far as the HDMI port itself is not wiggling, looks a lot better and more clean, and it's actually in place. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lift these up. The reason why I lift these up is so I can get a good angle and view of the um, header, so we can be able to solder down each individual pin onto the header. So I'm going to take my 8341 no clean flux, just apply it all throughout the header. Let me move away my fume extractor a little bit because it's kind of getting me caught up. I'm going to take our hackle solder iron once again, and we're going to individually solder down every single pin to the board. All right, so every single pin is soldered down. I'm going to change the light just so I can be able to see. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and push on every single pin just to make sure it is soldered down correctly. Let me get a little bit better of a focus. So I'm just going to lightly push on them. You don't want to, obvi you obviously press too hard on it. You will break it. And this, we're just verifying that every single pin is correctly soldered down onto the board. And yes, it is. So um, I'm going to go ahead and take my toothbrush and I'll show you guys right here. I just got just a regular toothbrush. I have 99% um, IPA. I just dipped my toothbrush in it. And I'm going to go back over to the microscope. I am going to just run around this and clean this whole area up. And while I'm at it, I'm going to take off this Kapton tape because we no longer need it. So I can get a good and thorough clean along the entire header, even underneath it. I'm cleaning underneath it. And then I kind of just wipe it off. How I do it is I have this cloth right here. And I kind of just wipe my toothbrush off on the cloth. And um, that allows me to be able to quickly just dry off this area with the toothbrush. All right, so now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is take a regular Q-tip and I'm just gonna go in here and just move back and forth like that. Obviously, I just, I kind of move at this angle because I hate leaving a bunch of cotton fuzz in there. But this just kind of helps dry it up. And I'll just switch over to the other side. Because that other side just had all types of just cotton and crap hanging off of it. And yeah, so that looks a lot better. I'm going to go around the HMI port. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to one more time just go back and forth. And... As you can see in both lights, you can see that we now have a very clean HDMI port. I just put those um, two pins back. Now, here's what we're going to have to deal with. Uh, this HDMI IC, the encoder, which doesn't even look like it's 
even on there, right? It looks like it's actually hanging off to the left. I don't know. Um, but we're definitely going to have to replace that. So let's go ahead and take our 8341 no clean flux. We're going to go around the IC chip like this. And now what we're going to do is take a regular, um, this is just a heat wand that you could get from anywhere. It's a Tular heat wand. Um, I'm going to set it to the air pressure to 4.5. I'm going to set the heat to um, 350 just to make sure it can get as hot as possible. And um, yeah, so I'm going to allow this to heat up. And what we're going to do is also, if you don't feel comfortable, you can put cap time tape around the HDMI port to protect it. Um, but I feel fully comfortable with um, doing it with that HDMI port right there. So also, these are the, the, the um, tweezers. If, I'm trying to look at the TV at the same time to make sure you guys can see it. It's like very small tweezers that you can use to um, pick up the chip. Um, Bigger chips, bigger BGA chips, I would usually use, oh, sorry, I'm going to set the temperature at 500, um, but bigger BGA chips, I would usually use my air um, suction pump that's over here, but this chip is tiny and this doesn't require um, that much pressure. So um, let's go back up to the mic, under the mic roll. All right, so as you can see, we have the um, old IC completely off, and oh boy, is this a complete mess. I mean, this looks bad. So um, let's try to get the entire header with new solder. Now I'm just gonna go around and just hit all four corners now, what I try to never do is to put solder right here, um, right there in the middle, um, because you don't need it in this hell if you do put solder right there, because you would need to use a de some desolder braid to, in order to get it off. All right, guys, so what I'm going to just end up doing is actually taking my, my solder wick my desolder braid and I'm going to just go around here and just lift all this solder off of here because um, there's so many just cross solder points on here and it just looks bad and I really want to get a deeper look at the entire header so as you can see I'm just taking my desolder braid apply some 8341 no clean flux and I'm just going around and um, just lifting up all this old solder. All right, so that looks um, a lot better. And as you can see, I'm going to switch the lighting. Um, I mean, obviously, a lot of the, the traces have been just really just connected to where they need to go. Um, so I'm going to see uh, because I, I don't know how this is going to end up working just because, I mean, it's, the, the traces are still looking kind of crazy so i'm gonna tin my solder point with a little bit of solder i'm gonna start with this side first all right so we have all new solder on that side let me switch the light to make sure that side looks good all right, so that side looks good. Now we're going to go to the bottom. So I'm going to move this down. All 
right? So um, now what I just did was I just put blocks on all four corners, including the middle. And I'm gonna take my HDMI encoder that I took off of a donor motherboard. And we're just gonna prepare to get this um, one on there. So I'm gonna allow my heat wand to heat up. We're gonna solder this on there and see if we can be able to get this up and working now. All right, so that looks to be in place perfectly. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply a little bit more flux, the four corners. What I'm gonna do now is take my heat wand, allow it to heat up, and while that's heating up, I am going to take my small um, flathead screwdriver, and I'm just gonna hold it down in the middle like this. And what's gonna happen is, is when this heats up and all the solder balls melt, is it should be able to get a, a straight direct connection. So when I hold it down like this, don't want to put too much pressure on it, but this helps force those solder ball connections on there. So as you can see, the, the solder underneath is flowing nice and good. Got it held on. Now just lift it. And yeah, that, that looks good. Right, so that's gonna definitely be the best. I'm gonna be able to get that. That looks good to me. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my toothbrush, dip it in my 99% IPA, and I'm just gonna do one last good clean around over here. And as you can see, just this whole general area looks 10 times better. But hopefully it, it can work with those traces looking like that. Wow. Um, I just noticed this. This barely has any thermal compound. Um, someone took off the old thermal compound and um, used that cheap white stuff on here instead of actual real thermal so i'm gonna take this crap off of here yeah guys never use any thermal compound below arctic super five don't waste your time i mean that right there with that thermal compound it, it would have probably blew this apu that thermal doesn't do anything it's just for look i mean you might you're just as good <laughs> good as just putting lotion on this thing and letting it sit so let's pop a little bit of Arctic Silver on here. Jeez. Yeah, this was an interesting PlayStation. So we got that on there. Let's kick this off. Get this put on there. All right, so let's go ahead and get this thing tested out. So I got that thermal compound on there and let's get this thing put partially back together and see if it works now. All right, guys, so we got it put partially back together just in case if something still is wrong so we can be able to quickly get it put back together. Now, as you can see, um, we have it right here. I'm gonna turn it on like so. Fan is spinning. I'm gonna go over to the screen and see what we can get okay we got a black screen 
Okay, now I went back to no signal. Let's see, because at first we didn't even get a black screen, so let's hope and pray that we was able to get this issue repaired. Sorry, I know the camera is kind of out of focus. Okay, so now it's back to a black screen. Okay, um, now it's actually checking the system still works. So we got the PlayStation logo. And let's see if it can be able to make it to the dashboard. If it does not make it to past this screen, then we're going to have to do one more thing, which would be replace the hard drive. Okay. Looks like we was able to make it past the dashboard. Wow. <laughs> All right. So um, I'm testing out the controller. Okay. So controller is connected and yeah, everything seems to be working perfectly fine. Now we was able to get this console working. You can see where we're at right here. We was able to get it up and working a hundred percent fine. So it looks like this customer is going to be very happy with this one because the last repair shop deemed it as unrepairable. All right, guys, I hope you guys did enjoy this video today. Um, let this be a valuable lesson. Never give up on any of these game consoles. I mean, obviously some of these repair shops they'll say is unrepairable. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. Most of the time when a repair shop says it's unrepairable is usually because they can't repair it themselves, unfortunately. And that's exactly what they did with this one. As you can see, we got it fully back up and working and everything is good. You guys do more want to see more content like this make sure you go ahead and like the video subscribe to the channel as well if you have any questions or if you want to see something specific done on this channel some type of repair that you will want to know how to do let me know in the comments down below but besides that i'll see you guys on the flip side see ya